Hello, everybody. Min from minmaxblog.com here. Um, this is more of a free form style video, so I don't know how long it's going to go. I'm probably going to speak terribly and not look at the camera enough. I don't, I don't do a lot of these, obviously. Um, I kind of wanted to just give a quick update on where uh, things stand in terms of minmaxblog.com, uh, our magic content, and our relationship with magic overall, and where we've been the past couple of months. Um, so to that extent, uh, I, um, let, let's, I guess, let's kind of go through the state of the world right now because things, uh, how the world is kind of dictates how we are obviously. Right. So, um, right now, uh, we're in the end of June, 2020, uh, and the world is honestly not great right now um we're dealing with a global pandemic across the planets um and we're also dealing with is dealing with it's not maybe not, not the right word for it but the injustices of humanity uh kind of coming to light so i i, I don't necessarily want to harp too much on that because i would like to leave room for the voices uh that actually need to be heard and not my own um so this 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 video is going to be mostly about where uh, our personal lives are and um why you haven't heard from us in months basically uh, i know min max um started it off as kind of this passion project between max and myself where we would uh we would create hard hitting content uh on the stuff that we like doing and the game that we like playing um so that turned out to align at the time to be legacy the, the format and magic gathering and playing decks um we saw this void in where a lot of uh there wasn't a ton of like super hard hitting content um in other sites primarily because those other sites churn out things more quickly um pay writers uh more for like for articles per week, um, or rather weekly articles, to constantly create uh, and, and garner interest, right? Um, so the content themselves in these pieces are are not like the analytical and deep divey type material that we enjoyed reading. So we took it upon ourselves as a mission to kind of have pieces that are not. Um, and no insulting to those to those writers that that work for sites like that. It's phenomenal the work that you do. But I know, speaking from someone who's done writing, that it's challenging. It is extremely uh, exponentially challenging. Um, coming up with good topics, um, good frames, and good ideas, uh, and the editing cycle is also pretty quick. And in some cases, you might have to write something. Um, that gets outdated the the next week by the time your article's actually out, and it's really disappointing to have that feeling. Um, so I guess that kind of segues into uh, the state of magic right now. Um, obviously, due to the global pandemic, a lot of Magic the Gathering uh, um, content has kind of switched to an online-specific format, um, be it content creators who are doing phenomenal jobs um, with Magic Online and Magic Arena, be it uh, people playing webcam games of magic and kind of streaming those, all, all are fantastic methods of keeping yourself into the game. However, you'll notice that over the past couple of months, a lot of, uh, you'll, you haven't seen anything from minmaxblog.com, right? Um, and that's because we've both kind of been busy with other uh, elements of our lives. Um, Max, uh, I, I won't speak for him, obviously, but he just recently had another child, um, which is taking up a lot of him and Manisha's time uh, for clear reasons, right? Um, whereas I, uh, we've been searching for a house and we've been full on house hunting. So a lot of our time has been taken up by that. Um, and in terms of hobbies, magic has kind of taken a back seat because a lot of the, the allure to the format that we enjoy playing is a lot of those kind of physical games. Um, the, the the legacy community to this day is still like one of my favorite parts about the game and we haven't had an opportunity much to um, interact with the community uh, and 
our our content while being online um is not necessarily conducive to online specific things because we we're also very competitive people we enjoy competing we enjoy looking forward to big events and preparing for those events i, I know the large part of my drive and legacy in general is to tune and tweak a deck list for a major paper tournament and that's not possible right now so a lot of our our mindset and our mentality has shifted to other things um, I run a D&D campaign that's uh, coming up to almost year three in October or so, and it's going to be wrapping up. And um, for those that are involved in that hobby, you're aware that D&D campaigns are no joke. You have a lot, do a lot of preparation, a lot of, um, a lot of work goes into them. And I, I guess long story short, a lot of our time has been taken up by other factors, um, and we deemed magic to not be as important um, given the circumstances of the world and circumstances of, of magic and organized play. So that being said, um, a lot of uh, our writing has kind of stagnated and the legacy format itself has kind of felt not quite as exciting, um, partially due to the fact that we've had so many waves of uh, bannings for multiple reasons. So like we went through uh, Ren and Six, uh, we went through Breach, and now um, the Companion Shift, and now we're here uh, in a format that I'm not super familiar with, to be honest. I haven't played a ton of games um, of the post-Companion Band world of Legacy. And I think that's okay. It's okay to kind of sip away and look at other things, but uh, we'd also want to uh, make it clear that we aren't gone gone um not by any means um and in fact it's kind of quite kind of why i'm making this video uh to talk a little bit about what we're, what we're planning on uh working towards um in the future which I'll, I'll i'll definitely get to and just kind of speaking more on magic right now um we we did have some overpowered stuff going on for sure uh through the course of 2019's printings and 2020's printings, a lot of people are kind of disillusioned with how um, the legacy format's been handled, which, to be fair, uh, it, it, it totally makes sense. I would, I, I, I would be, if not for the fact that I thoroughly enjoyed... Um, I, I, I care a lot less about game balance and more about figuring out what's powerful in, in specific formats and playing them. Um, that's a, definitely a shift from how I was in the past, where I enjoyed working on like fair blue miracles uh, control strategies quite a bit. Um, with, uh, due to other factors, obviously, um, with having less time for magic, I'm also less inclined to tweak and tune um, like a specific archetype and I kind of jump around a little bit. You may have seen that in a few of our pieces um, kind of towards the end uh, there. Where we, uh, like I played uh, Ren and Six Delver, um, I played Breach, uh, I played Luris, um, Delver and Luris Miracles, um, but I, I kind of, I, I don't have as much time to do deep dives and figure out how I want to shift like a specific deck for an archetype, um, or, or for a metagame, excuse me, because that metagame oftentimes shifts more quickly. Um, bannings have happened, and people uh, don't get to play the same like powerful cards that they wanted to. They've been wanting to play event after event. Um, that being said, there's something still innovation happening right now. Um, Legacy is in, uh, it's in a place where I'm. I feel comfortable kind of going back and revisiting it, and kind of figuring out how I want to approach the format. Um, Miracles is definitely an option. Uh, but the as time goes on, as, as printings have gone on, with Uro being in the format, um, having your deck be clunky in any way uh, feels like you're kind of bringing a knife to a gunfight, so to speak. So um, I don't know where exactly I'm going to be approaching my reintroduction to the format. Um, but I intend to kind of do more documentary style uh, video pieces like this. To kind of talk about um, just my general thoughts about um, the stuff that we're making content on. So today we're actually going to do a bit of a um, kind of what's next 
project for MinMax um, to see, uh, kind of give you a quick glimpse of where things are at now um, and where things are going to be in the future, hopefully. So let me do a quick transition. So um, you should be seeing my crazy wide desktop now. Um, and I wanted to kind of do a quick explanation of what I'm working on these days and then what's going to be in the future. So this is uh, our current website, minmaxblock.com. Um, it has kind of uh, everything that you see. And I, and I think um, in terms of magic websites, it's uh, well put together, cognizant and coherent um, of how uh, sites are built. Uh, it's very clean. Uh, and we're not really doing a ton else besides pushing out um, articles that we we don't get paid for. Um, for j just to be clear. Oops. So a lot of the stuff that we do uh, from MinMax is um, just stuff that we like to do, stuff that we just enjoy doing, um, and writing articles is a lot of work um coming up with cohesive ideas on how we want to put together um how we want to present um basically takeaways for the audience constantly right we want to make sure we structure the article correctly and writing itself is it's not easy and it's not um it takes a lot of time to get right and because Max and I, we do this as a hobby, uh, we don't have strict deadlines. Um, we, we can put out articles whenever we feel like it, whenever things are topical, um, and whenever we're motivated. So early on, we wrote them every week, uh, every two weeks, and so on, because we were feeling motivated. We felt very much like um, we had things that we wanted to say to the world, and there were takeaways um, that other people could find valuable. And I'm super, I'm beyond proud of the work that we put into the site. That being said, um, to those of you who simply visit the site in a, uh, in a normal basis, you may not realize this, but there is a lot of stuff in here um, that took, that looks like it takes um, a couple hours when in, it turns into days because we are dealing with a problem that is not easily visible from this screen. Um, so I'm also a software developer. And uh, MinMax kind of started off this grand idea. Um, and you know, when you're working, if you don't have a goal to work towards, sometimes your ideas just take go on forever and ever before seeing any sort of fruition. Now, this was what was likely going to happen with MinMax, to be honest, because I wanted to do it from scratch. I wanted to um, focus on the architecture of the website and how it was put together rather than the architecture of the content and how what we wanted to put in it. And Max, in his infinite wisdom, realized this was going to happen. And instead, uh, we wanted to go for a quicker solution. So um, minmaxblock.com is actually a Squarespace site. Now, um, there might be a stigma to using builder sites like Squarespace and Wix. Um, but for the purposes of what we were doing, it, it was totally reasonable. Um, like it let us quickly, ha it had built in everything that we needed except for one key thing, which I'll get to here in a minute. And it allowed us full control of the site um, from like how we wanted to display stuff. Um, and it, it looked pretty. Uh, there were like these massive hero images, ab the ability for us to include whatever sections we want on the site. Um, a full-on depth guide for other sections. Um, it worked well for our needs, built-in search, and like we could get off the ground running with writing um, articles, which was the purpose of our website in the first place. So like um, a lot of this was created by the desire for us to write content and not re-engineer a, a product um, because we're not, we're not in the market for doing that. So uh, kind of circling back on our writing process, a lot of um, our pieces are very pretty. Um, they're well put together. Um, they mesh well together. 
excuse me, and they contain interactive elements that are key to putting off ideas. So you'll notice that we soon after uh, the launch of MinMax, we incorporated this card fetcher. So like to highlight over elements and hover and see cards, which is great. Most magic websites have this built in. Um, this added a lot of um, life to the site. They allowed, it allowed us to do quite a bit um, in terms of just like showing off uh, and kind of incorporating our ideas without having users go look up a card that we're describing or talking about. Um, you know, I also notice a few cool elements like this, where it shows the text of the card and so on. Um, they're all very cool and very interesting and fun. Uh, and a lot of website stuff because we're writing a blog and we're not writing, like, we're not like reinventing the wheel um, in terms of what we're trying to do. We are simply writing a blog and the idea is that you consume our content because the articles that we that we write are something that you enjoy reading. Um, we'll also do like videos, like league matches, um, in some cases like podcasts or videos like this. It's just a place to hold all of those things to share it with the world. We're not doing anything else. So a lot of the, the these like cool images and cool like little interactions um, are superficial to some extent, but also they add a lot to users kind of engaging in our content. So we we like doing this um, a lot because it, it I feel like it adds a lot of life to an otherwise static and and not a ton of uh, information around site. The problem is that whenever we have either a a card um, like Emrakul, Helm of Obedience, and Tarmogoyf, and so on, or b a deck list to share. Uh, let me see if I can pull up a site contain or a yeah like this. We have to use. Um, I guess there are two different cases, so I'll explain both. Um, the first. For these, whenever we're writing um, and we use card names, we have to go back and include, and again, this is going to be some technical speak, so you can feel free to um, zone out if you are not a uh, not interested in web technologies in any means. You'll notice, I guess maybe a better way of showing this is on a Squarespace site. Like if I go down one of our older articles and go down to say Hex Drinker Rug Delver, you'll notice this editor and you'll notice there's a bunch of embedded scripts and so on. Um, or alternatively, I can just click on, I didn't mention this is going to be of an exploratory piece. All right, so if you click on editing uh, an article, and like click on any of our text blocks. So like this, for example, that uses a bunch of card names. Um, a little bit bigger so you can see. I'm highlighting a segment here. Span class equals inline NTG. And then you're closing a span. So spans in web development are essentially um, blocks of text that you want to do something with uh, apart from your the rest of your copy. In this case, this span class equals inline MTG is an identifier for a script that looks for anything that says span equals inline MTG. And if the inside of the, the span represents a card name, it then goes and fetches the, uh, the image and puts the card name there. And it's the, the tooltip. We have to do this manually for every single article where we write. So, when we have guest articles, I usually ask them to bold um, the card names for me, and then I'll go back and edit them and add in the situation. Now, you can do this uh, via Excel and like um, having a script that like writes, that looks for card names and then matches the card name and, and does it automatically here. But we're at introducing a lot of layers into our writing when already writing an article takes so much time. So, um, this single interaction point 
um, is enough to make writing something that we don't look forward to, that we don't find fun because we have to take like an extra hour or two to redo, <coughs> pardon me, or to re-add in card images and, and it's not fun. It's really not. Um, for the deck lists, we have to incorporate a third party script from a website that someone else wrote, um, which I'm very thankful that they wrote because it makes my life easier, but we have to like basically follow this format and then export out this stuff and then take away the bootstrap and it's a, sh it's a lot. So, uh, to that end, I'm rewriting MinMax. I'm rewriting the blog. Um, I'm doing what I initially wanted to do and doing it from hand with functional, functional pieces that we have. So what that means for you, dear reader, um, is fairly soon, um, I've been crazy motivated the past few weeks and I've done a lot of work. Um, you should experience a new, uh, kind of way to view the website, uh, to view our, our website. Um, features to expect include no longer having like a massive monolithic homepage. Instead, um, effectively what this uh, minmaxblog.com slash magic will turn out to be will be the new homepage. Basically all of our uh, articles, all of our pieces kind of in one spot um, to make it easier for the reader to consume without having to click around the site. Uh, you'll... And we're not going to lose any functionality. Uh, we're, everything you see on this site, including comments, search, um, and so on, will be incorporated into the new site as well. Uh, separating by author, separating by uh, tags getting used, uh, those are all going to be available on the new website. And I'm writing it from the ground up. Um, for those interested, I'm using uh, something called Gatsby, which is a static site generating tool um, and managing our content using a headless CMS, uh, which is really, really cool web technology and it makes the site go super fast. Um, to kind of give you an example, uh, I don't know if I should show this, but I think I'm gonna go into, go into it anyway because it's fun. This is what I've got so far. I'm zooming in so the video can pick up a little bit of it, but it's, um, you'll notice the nice placeholder dog images. Um, but it's gonna be a lot more straightforward uh, and it's gonna be very, very, very fast. That is my biggest goal um, in making sure that our readability stays um, current. So kind of a quick, glimpse into what Minimax will look like in the future. Uh, obviously, that's like the design itself is going to be changing for sure. Um, that was just the bare bones um, stuff that I wanted to start working on and functional pieces. So things to look, look out for include um, social sharing on any article and in a single click without having to do uh, like copy pasting. Um, you'll have it available to you on each piece if you wanted to share it out to any social networks, which is great. Um, integration with um, and from a writing perspective, we're going to make uh, the deck list, the, the card finder, uh, a lot more intelligent. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be writing one myself instead of using a, a tool that scrapes and looks for a class. Instead, I'll be writing one by hand because it's going to be in React. Uh, and React is next-gen web technology. Uh, I guess it's current-gen at this point, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it's just really cool stuff. And I'm, in, I'm beyond excited, I'm beyond motivated uh, to be working on this. It's the most fun I've had working on magic stuff. And it's not even magic specific. It's just working on a, a new website and a new, uh, new series of technologies, to me at least, um, that I find to be really interesting. So um, what that means is it's going to still be a couple of weeks until we start writing pieces of, of magic content again. Um, and who knows, we, maybe we'll see a lot of shakeups with M21. Um, and again, it's kind of, it's still kind of, uh, to be seen, uh, if like something like goblins, for example, comes out and becomes a, a massive force. Um, we, we don't know. 
Um, we haven't explored the format a ton. Uh, I know Max uh, has uh, started doing some drafting uh, to learn limited, which is great because limited is likely the most challenging format, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the future looks bright. Um, and we might start branching out and talking a little bit more about the rest of our hobbies uh, and, and things that we're involved with, just everyday life. Um, I know it's it's a challenging time right now for sure, and a lot of what we as people are are, are going through requires some camaraderie and uh, some positivity. And don't forego um, fighting for social justice and social equality. Ever, um, the fight's just beginning, but. For those that follow us for our magic pieces, um, look forward to seeing seeing uh, new stuff from us soon. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Take care.